Second Chronicles 15. And the Spirit of God, there's the Holy Spirit, came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa, right after the battle with the uh, Ethiopians, verse 14, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah, and Benjamin. So directed the three, the king and the people, Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you <laughs> at this great battle. After relying on God, claiming God as, as his own. I mean, the battle's over, it's for sure. God is with us. God sends a prophet and says, I'm with you. Why? Don't go patting yourself on the back. Count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done for you. Not what you did. Don't come back and say, oh, look how good we battled the Ephesians. Asa? Remember that battle you got? See all the cows, see all the sheep, the camels, the food, the tents? I did that. I am with you. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. Now that's, a, that's, if you're serving God, God's going to be with you. If you forsake God, God's going to forsake you. That's condition. There's no Calvinism about it. As long as you do what God tells you to do, God's going to bless you. You step out of his will and you become an enemy of God, even though you be a child of God. God is not going to bless you in your forsaking. Even if you are a child of God, if you're saved. I'm talking Christians. God cannot bless rebellion. And if, conditional, ye seek him, and that's exactly what Asa did. Chapter 14. He will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. That's a warning. So don't go about thinking, oh, I'm, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, I'm going to go out and live any rebellious life, and God's going to bless me. Absolutely not. Hebrews 12 or 13, if I get to the chapter, says, as a father chastises his, his son, so will God chastise us, his son. God's not going to let us get away with evil. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. The judges, and all of the periods, wilderness. I mean, God's with them, but the people weren't with God. And without a teaching priest. And without law. Now... <laughs> Solomon built that temple as the fact is that, okay, he built the temple. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. But look, it says Israel. It doesn't say Judah and Benjamin, verse 2. When Jeroboam split the nation, he told the Levites, get out of here. Go away. Oh, you want to be a priest? You got yourself, what was it, a cow or a, a, a ram or something like that? Okay, now you can be my priest. Now we got... Christ mass. See, we got Christ and we got the mass together. We've got a star in the, in, the, in the service. Jeroboam and Israel do not have God. They do not have that teaching God. And it's funny because God is directing a the children of Israel through Asa. Asa has the temple. Asa has the Levitical priesthood. We'll read on. So this chapter is not really looking at Judah and Benjamin is looking at Asa to Israel. Asa, you get over there and tell them what they're doing wrong. Oh, it's not what the Bible says you do. No, it's not what Jesus would do. Today, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them they're wrong. They need a teaching priest. That, you know, those calves, those... Your service you got is wrong. You've been without the true God. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him, he was found of them. That is throughout the book of Judges. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him, he was found of them. Again, that's Judges. Israel, now when we're under the kings, since Jeroboam, the first king of Israel, the, the split, 
not one of those kings in Israel will get right. Asa is a good king. We'll have a bad king. We'll have a bad king. We'll get a good king. We'll get a good king. We'll get a couple bad kings. We'll get a good king in Judah, Israel. No good kings that saw after God's heart. At least what God is doing is that if you go back to the book of Judges, yeah, you were without me. You were desolate without me. You rebelled against me, but when you came and sought me, I sent you a judge and I gave you victory. And when we, when we read through Kings, we kept on saying, the sin that Jeroboam made Israel to sin, the sin that Jeroboam made, it, it just got worse and worse and worse and worse, and then up pops Jezebel and makes it totally worse. At least there's some hope in Judah, but even that starts dying. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out. Peace comes from God. Nor to him that came in. Whether he went out or he didn't come in, there was no peace without God. You are an enemy of God. God is angry with the wicked every day. That's why alcohol is, is such a big sell. That's why illegal and over-the-counter drugs and prescription drugs are such a great sell. That's why tobacco is such a great sell. Because it gives you temporary peace away from your rebellion against God. And if you were the Holy Spirit, verse 1, what is one of the fruit of the Spirit that you get? is love, joy, peace. Now that's not going to stop your trouble. But as we read in Psalms as a family today, I will deliver you out of your trouble. I'm not going to stop you from your troubles. You're not going to have a life with no troubles, but I'll get you through the troubles. So those times there was no peace in him that went out or that went in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country. And nation was destroyed of nation, Gentiles. And city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. When you're an enemy of God, you are an enemy. When you're an enemy of God, you are an enemy of the world. You can't, as a Christian, say, well, I'm going to be worldly and live with the world. The world don't want you. I've tried that. I've tried living backslidden. They know who you are. They know who you represent. They know you don't belong to their family no more. They know you are not a child of Satan. They may use you, they may try to get something from you, but you're not part of them. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Keep your hands busy, keep your hands ready, keep your hands serving the Lord. And when Asa heard these words, and the prophecy of Obed the prophet, that's kind of funny because it said, heard the words and the prophecy of Obed. Look at verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. The prophecy of Obed, the prophet. A father and son. And I don't mean father, the guy who wears his shirt on backwards. Where the mouth of two, the law says, it shall be established. He, Asa, took courage in the Lord and put away the abominable idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin. He was doing that in verse 14, I mean, chapter 14. You know what he did? <clears throat> God's given the victory. God spoke to me. There's things still wrong. Get it all out. And if you want to get right in the church house today, you've got to get all those idols out. You gotta get all that false idolatry out. You gotta get what is Satan's out. As a Christian, you gotta get what belongs to Satan out of your house, out of your family, and out of your heart. Asa did that verse in chapter 14, verses 3 and 4. But in chapter 15, verse 8, there's some that were hidden, that were still there. He didn't completely get them all out, but when God spoke to him, Got a problem? Then he gets them all out. Then he gets them all out. Out of the land of Judah and Benjamin, out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim, chapter 14, 
and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. That's a brazen altar. He went to the temple, he went to that brazen altar, and he rededicated that altar to the Lord and serving him. He's going to do right. I thought he was doing right in chapter 14. He's doing right earth. He's getting better in the Lord. He's growing in the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers, that'd be Gentiles, with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh, out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel, that's north, in abundance, when they saw that the Lord God was with them. Now his life has lightened the people around to say, you know what? God is with Asa. You know what? I want that God too. Let's go. And you're, you know, in a way, people will come up as an excuse. I let my light shine. They don't. But if you are a true, dedicated Christian, and you love the Lord, and the Lord's working through you, and you may not even know, and you are trying to clean up your life, and people are watching you, you may not even realize what the Lord is doing in your life. People may say, wow, that person's got victory. That person's got love. That person has got joy I don't have. That person's got peace. That they're going through turmoil. And they, it's not going to happen. Listen, what I'm going to say right now is not going to happen by the droves. It's going to happen a twinkle here and a twinkle here. Some will come up to you and say, well, I want to know what you have. And it has happened. And you don't need to say, I'll let my light shine and stuff like that. No, you let your light shine your life shine you let god rule your life and people will take notice to the sorry thing they'll take notice for the bad but here are people all around they're coming to ace like wow look what saw that god the lord his god was with him what a testimony you know what america would do if he's breaking down these idols breaking down these images tearing away the religion they get upset they call the newspaper they call the lawyer they call the environmental groups they would call all these people ace is a bad guy no oh, we gotta put him in jail uh, today you know i just read headlines that's all i do there are more headlines for this today for people who have done something to an animal than somebody has done something for another human being that's wrong there's more value for an animal than there is for a human being. That's wrong. Asa is making a stand for all the people. And he's not doing it for the people. He's doing it for the Lord. And the people are looking at him like, wow. Amazing. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem, where they're supposed to meet, in the third month, and it's even given a date, in the 15th year of the reign of Asa. So he's been on the throne for 15 years. On the third month, everybody's coming to Jerusalem. Can you imagine just looking like, wow. Why did God speak to him about Israel earlier? Because here's come some people out of Israel. And he's got to make sure that these people coming down from Israel don't bring the golden calves into Jerusalem. Because you might have a church that would love the golden calves and keep it. I have to say. And these people that come down from Israel, you know what Asa's job to do? You know what the Levitical priest was to do? To show those Israelites where they are wrong and where their nation is wrong. That God is not blessing their nation. God's blessing Judah and Benjamin. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil, chapter 14, which they had brought 700 oxen, and 7,000 sheep. And they entered into the covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart. Well, look at that of the Christian. For with that heart, man believes unto righteousness. That same heart that I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that same heart here in the Old Testament, we are going to serve God. God, you know how much we love you? How much we're going to serve you? Here is some oxen, and here is some sheep. We're giving out of our pocketbook. We're giving out of our house. You know, one of the first things will show your true love for God that people who are the world and are not saved, that he's preaching about offerings and givings and money. 
They want to give back to God what God's given. God's the one that gave them the sheep. God's the one that gave them the oxen. At least they can do is give some back. God gives you a dollar. We're not under tithes, but the tithe is, for the Old Testament, 10 cents. Is that really so bad? With their heart and with all their soul. That is their eternalness. Your body will rot in the grave. When you're a Christian, you'll get a brand new body. When you go off into hell, you're going to get a, another body. But this body right here, flesh, is going to rot. Your spirit, whether lost or saved, goes back to God. It belongs to God at uh, Genesis chapter 2. God, and God breathed into man, and man became a living soul. That soul goes to heaven or goes to hell. The eternal part of man says, and that heart of man says, we want you, God. And that makes a difference for people around you. That makes a difference for serving the Lord. That whosoever, uh-oh, would not seek, uh-oh, the Lord God of Israel, uh-oh, should be put to death. Look at that church and state. Where did the congregationals go wrong? If you don't serve us as a church, we're going to confiscate your goods. We're going to beat you at the town green. We're even going to kill you. You see, when the congregation read the Lord God of Israel, do you know what Massachusetts was? It was the new Israel. Look it up. The new covenant. God was all finished with Israel. So we Gentiles, we are the new Israel. We get all the blessings of Israel. We have the right to confiscate lands in the name of Jesus Christ. We have the right to, to conquer lands like the Catholic Church claimed to be the Israel of God. That's a lie. That's a phony religion. That's falsehood. A says, King, here we are in the Old Testament. We are in a land grant. We are in a a body of land not going to have a Jew look forward to land, not heaven. He says, as far as our land, one nation under God, no other God, we are a Christian nation, and under those things of the Old Testament, of the land of Israel, Judah, and Benjamin, if you don't serve the Lord God according to the law, we're going to give you death penalty. We're going to kill you. We're going to stone you, because that's what God said in the law. Asa wants you to serve God, or he wants you going. And if they don't want to serve God, and they don't want to lose their lives, what would they do? They would leave. They would evacuate themselves. Leaving a nation purely to serve God. Whether small or great, whether man or woman, he don't care. Whether you're a light-colored Jew or a dark-colored Jew, they don't care. You're going to serve God. Our Constitution forbids our nation to say we're going to serve one God and one God only. Are you a Christian? You're upset that Muslims being taught in the public school system? Do you not like the Muslims being taught in the public school system? Thank you, Constitution. Are you happy that the sodomites are running around? That we now have a national sodomite month now of all the cities and, and the rainbow colors. Are you happy with that? Thank your Constitution. Your Constitution gives them the right. Oh, you want the Constitution just for your purpose, not for theirs. You have the right to preach on the street the, the gospel, which we do in the Constitution, but you don't want the, the, the sinners to have their rights to preach the same thing. As far as that that, that Satan 666 idol statue they put some I don't know where it is, I don't care. But you know what I say to that? If I have a right to put the Ten Commandments statue up, they have a right to put their God up. You know what Elijah said? If our God be God, let him be God. If your God be God, let him be God. We had one time, we were in a public street ministry, and the people came out. They had their own signs against God. The police officers came up to me. They know I was in charge. They said, what would you want us to do with them? I said, they have perfectly good right to be there. So one thing I asked officer, I asked for peace. They have the right to say what they want to say. I have the right to say what I want to say. We give each other equal time. That's all I ask. 
That's all I have. What's wrong with that? But the Constitution says they get, they can be there too. The Constitution of the United States will not allow us to serve one God. But how come the Constitution of the United States won't allow Jesus in the Bible in the, in the public school system? Why can we get him in the jail system, which is now stopping? Jesus Christ in the Bible is not welcome in the public school system, but everything else is. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice. You want to ask my family about that one? You're too loud. You're scary. The people with a loud voice say, Lord, we're going to serve you. Here's our cows. Here's our oxen. And with shoutings. And with trumpets. And with coronets. How's that? They wanted God, they wanted God to hear him. Not like God's heart of healing. Maybe they wanted all the people to hear him too. May they want all the people to hear we love the Lord and we're not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. How do you know? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why don't you shut up? No, Jesus saves. That's not what the Bible, it's not, it's not in the Bible, Jesus wouldn't do that. You don't read your Bible. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. No one signs me up. No one provokes me to do it. I want to do it. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, Isaiah says, and declare the sins of the people. And Judah rejoiced at the oath. And they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. Did you remember chapter 14? Rest, rest, peace, peace, rest, rest. We're going to serve you, God. We're going to give you it all. Thank you for the battle. Thank you for the win. Thank you for the spoil. You're the God of all gods. And we got more peace. <laughs> we got more, got more rest. Why are they resting round about? Because they rested in God. That rest applies two ways. I'm at ease and you're my support. And watch this. And also concerning Micaiah, Micaiah, the mother of Asa. Oh, how sweet. The king. Make sure you know who he is. He's the king. She wasn't the king. He is the king. He removed her from being queen. Yo, mom, get out. Why? Because he had because she had made an idol in a grove. Now, that's not a kick to the Catholic religion. I don't know. There's Mama. There's her idol. And there's her trees around her. And the king, her, her son of the nation said, Mom, get out of here. We don't want Mary. We don't want your grove. We don't want your statue. We want God. Quote that to your Catholic friend. Because every Catholic church has got Mary and she's got her book of trees. Today in the Baptist church, you got your trees and you got the man in the pulpit. Some of them are women. Why do you need artificial trees in the church? I always wondered that. So there it is. He told his mom to go. She made a grow, she made an idol in the grove. Watch this. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the book of draw. Man, he gotta get rid of this. Now, do you think Asa made a great big stink in his family that day? you hear what he did to auntie whatever her name is <laughs> it's like a Gideon did. what it's like, a Gideon did. like Gideon did and Moses when he found that golden calf yep. well how dare my brother Asa treat mom like that and you know what you're going to happen when you serve the Lord correctly and you're going to despise your family and you don't mean to. You're just going to serve the Lord. You're going to say, I'm going to do right. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Well, that's a bold statement. Let's go back over to chapter 14, verse 5. 
And he took away all of the cities of Judah, the high places, and the images. Oh, wait a minute. But it says here, but the high places were not taken out of Israel. That's north. You know, that shows you Israel was not his kingdom. He did not go where he did not belong and destroy things. You have no right to go next door to your neighbor who's got Mary on the half shell. Whether you have no right to go to your neighbors and break that item. That's not your property. You had no right to go into a church and destroy the church, burn it down, or go whatever you, you have no right. That's not your territory. Now, if somebody would put out in front of my house as a joke, a Mary in the half shell, I would go to town because it was put on my property. But if it's across the street, if every house around my house had Mary's and statues and Buddhas with the big belly button and stuff like that, I am not to touch or destroy them or do any harm to them. Now, their neighbor, if my neighbors wake up in the morning, they're all holding gospel tracts, that might be me. If the Buddha has a pencil sticking out of his belly button, that may be me. That's not going to do harm to the statue. But I'm not to do anything harm to anything that's not my property, even though God's against it. Asa is in charge of Jerusalem, he's in charge of Judah, he's in charge of Benjamin, he's not in charge of Israel. Don't you think by what we read so far, if he had charge of Israel, don't you think those golden cows would have been stomped, burnt in, in the thing of Moses? And he didn't. So if you go do damage to something that's not yours, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are at odds in the Bible. The high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his day. See, he, he's still right with God. Israel's got a problem. Not Judah, not Benjamin, not Asa, not Jerusalem. His mom may have a problem, but he don't. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated, and that he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war under the fifth and twentieth, the fifth and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. So at the thirty-fifth year of his reign, there's another war we're going to be reading about. Right now, he's cleaning house. He's cleaning his house. 